Welcome back to another episode of the Franchising 360 Show. She is Danielle Wright. And I am Tim Parmeter, and we are the host of, again, the Franchising 360 show. Uh, every Friday night, we're going to take a 360 degree look at the franchising industry. Franchising is typically not what people think it is, and we're going to educate you on all the things. Things like, should you own a franchise? And if so, how do you know which is the best one for you? Once you are a franchise owner, we're going to talk about strategies for to help you grow and succeed as well as we're gonna show you how to take your existing business and turn it into a national or even international brand. Yes, that's possible. We have a guest joining us later on the show. That's <gasps> gonna be awesome. This guest has been in franchising for over a decade, working for franchisors, is now also a franchisee about to launch her business. We're gonna chat with her about her life on the inside of the franchise and hear her journey to get a new franchise open. So Danielle, we hear all the time in franchising, you even said it, I think maybe on our very first show, once you get into franchising, you don't really leave, yeah. right? Uh, you, you described it as, I think, the mob. <laughs> yes, I was told pretty early on, joining franchising is like joining the mafia. You never leave until you die. Right, um, less murder and extortion, typically in franchising. Yes. Typically. To our knowledge. To, to our knowledge. Why do you think that is once people get in? Because almost everybody, and I know our guest today is going to say this too, kind of get into franchising randomly like, like we did. Right. But then we all just stay or we move around. Why is that? Well, I can't speak for everyone, but we stay, I stay. Um, I think on the first episode we talked about, it's just a really good community. It's, you create friendships. It's not like, hey, I take a job and I'm staying because I don't really want to go anywhere else. If we don't stay specifically in what we do, as you have shared my resume on this show, I've stayed in franchising and I've worked in a bunch of different verticals within the industry. So I think that's what you do. You challenge yourself. You look at a different part of the industry, whether it's operations, maybe it's marketing, maybe it's sales. Um, but once you know a little bit, you know a lot in our world. And so you can kind of be diversified within it yeah. as it is. And I think even when people have a, have a job and you're working for a franchisor, whether you're doing franchise development or you could be in the back office with you know operations, marketing, yeah. whatever, there's a certain level of entrepreneurship even as an employee. So I think there's there tends to be kind of that freedom factor as yeah, well. Yeah, you get excited. Like you get excited for other people, right? It's it's really there is a, a strong emotion to this business because you're either like you're doing, you're helping someone find their better tomorrow, right. or you're helping that person decide this is the right opportunity for them. And so you get to go on the journey, less less my dollar to do it, but it kind of, you get to go what I call sidecar with someone on their next steps. And when they're venturing out for themselves, how cool is that? Like yeah. you just get to participate in that. It is it like, it, I mean, it's totally cheesy, but we really are helping people change their lives yeah. from a franchise owner stamp, standpoint, just having that overall control of their their existence moving forward. Yeah, it's and even on the franchisor side, you speak a lot to what it means to be a franchisee. I speak a lot of how does, how does that impact the franchise or why do you want to take your business and turn it into a, a franchise system? And it, it's a lot of it still rooted in that, hey, I care about another human and I would yeah. love to see them have success and I've had success in this. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. So why don't we put that all together? And you're, you're always around smart, successful people, right? I mean, yes. you, like you had referenced literally as we were driving over here today with one of your franchise or <laughs> clients, just the energy that like came from 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 that franchise and, and the kind of the community and the culture so passionate like it was definitely to to that point it was a discussion about strategic growth and where are we going to go in the next year and what everyone is passionate about and creating that that mission statement in and around what's going to drive us to the next thing and every person on the on the zoom screen is just very passionate about the service that they're delivering and i think you and i had talked about this i went into what is a discovery day and i'm sure we'll talk about that at some point right. um but you go in and you just the energy is fills your bucket and you're glad to be in the mix of those people and it just is a good time had by all yeah it is great it really i think the just that energy and being around like-minded successful driven people who yeah. are looking to um have, I mean, have a lot of fun but again the overall control of this and it kind of 
squashes the fear like we were talking on the last episode right right? like you are if you didn't have fear i would be concerned if you were talking to me about buying something or moving in that direction or taking the leap on yourself then you should have that fear but being a part of the franchising industry at large like yes we have titles yes we have division um but at the end of the day we're here to be everybody's cheerleader for that same success exactly and guess what coming up next we get our first guest on the yeah, show. Yeah, very I'm, good friend of ours. I am so excited um, and to have her come in. And, and again, same thing, hear about her journey in working for franchisors. Yeah. And now she's about to become a franchisee, almost ready to I open. I know, I'm super so excited. excited. I know, yeah. super cool. So our guest, uh, Stephanie Ruby, is next here on the Franchising 360 show. Welcome back to the Franchising 360 show. We are excited, just giddy. We have our very first franchise friend joining us today. It is the amazing Stephanie Ruby. Stephanie has been one of the top franchise development professionals for over a decade. She's helped several franchise brands grow and expand due to her amazing efforts. Stephanie is now taking all of this knowledge she's gained over the years and decided to become a franchise owner for herself. And she is set to launch her franchise here in Tampa very, very soon. Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Everything you said is true, by the way. Yeah. Top and, developer, and, amazing. Yes. So flattery and, gets you everywhere. And thanks for the money you gave me to say all of that stuff. So appreciate, appreciate that. Um, tell us, I always, franchising is all about yeah. the people, you know this, right? Like, how did you get started into this crazy world? So I had a baby uh, and I was in retail weight loss, right? And so it was running multiple weight loss centers, 18 employees, women range from 18 to their 50s. And I just remember being pregnant being like, I can't go back to that. Uh, I I just, I couldn't, they didn't even have daycares open the hours that I was working because it was so extensive. Uh, And so when I was on maternity leave, I was just going through Indeed and I was quick click applying for recruiter jobs. Because all I know is I sound good on the phone. That's all I knew. And so I was like, oh, I'll do this recruiter thing. Clicked on a job. They, it was my, my old boss at the, the time, Dana, brought me in. And I think I was even late for the interview. It was the only interview I was ever late for. I was like, I don't believe him. But he said, you know, you talk to these people and you make sure it's the right fit. And then eventually they buy a franchise and you can have weekends off. And I was like, okay okay um but apparently it's a thing uh and so that was 2010 i was with that company for four years then i went to where did i go uh at that time uh senior placement then junk calling where your partner and i our paths crossed at that point uh and then after that i got into pest control and now i'm with a biohazard and trauma cleanup franchise awesome which is one of the fun things about franchising is people go into, they own a franchise that they have little to no experience in, right? And your current one, and we'll go ahead and give a shout out to Bio One, Bio One. right? Is the name of the franchise. Um, not a lot of people sit around like his children going, mommy, daddy, someday I wanna clean up crime scenes. That sounds amazing. Um, yet and if it, they do, it's weird. Right. <laughs> Dude, it's really weird, but yeah. Yeah, but it is, but it's a thing, right? So what is, and again, I think this can come with a lot of franchises, but what's a reason somebody might want to own a franchise like that? You know, for that particular franchise, really the common denominator is people want to give back. They want to make a difference in the community. They want to bring closure to families. They want to, our whole thing is about compassion, discretion, and care. So when a family goes through trauma, we really prevent them from having to deal with the situation, they should never have to. Uh, So we come in in the back end and and we handle certain situations and we're the type of company we hope people don't ever need to know about us. Right, Don't, don't need to know, but again, when you think of, as you said that, you didn't talk about anybody having skills in crime scene no. cleanup or biohazard, right? We don't need extensive knowledge of watching Breaking no. Bad for years, no. caring, compassion, making a difference, things like that, really the big driver for, for owners for you guys. 100%, and, and there's a reality. I mean, and I think you guys can probably agree for a lot of brands, especially home services, because that's what I've been in for so long. <clears throat> The business is the business. Right. The widget, the that that might be different, but business ownership is business ownership, and it's the same activity that makes you successful in one industry that'll make you successful in another. So it's right. just finding the right one for you. And so. we talked a few weeks ago on here about the importance of a plan, right? Yeah. The franchise has one. Um, is that some? How important is that to you? Looking at your role right now yeah. is to find new franchise owners and make sure it's the right match, yeah. right? 
how important is that you determine somebody can actually follow and will follow a plan? Oh, it's almost everything, right? I mean, it's, it's such a big part of it. How many times have we said over the years in this industry, well, you have to follow the plan. Well, right. what's the plan, right? Well, the marketing, the strategy, the, the hiring, the, the staffing, uh, the showing up. Right. Uh, on a daily basis, right? So it, that's that's a huge part of what we do is making sure that somebody can follow plan and make right. sure it's a good fit on a few different levels. That could be different plans for, I mean, you've been to different franchise yeah. brands, right? Junk calling is a different plan than pest control versus biohazard versus senior, but it's still the importance of just like, I mean, it's almost like be a little dumb, right? I like, yeah, yeah. Part of it is the trust factor, right? right? So when you have somebody that's at a point in their lives where they can afford to purchase a franchise and take that next level out of corporate America, sometimes there's that trust level where it's like, I know I just signed up for this plan, right. but now you need to trust the process to follow the process. Right. And, and behind the process is the people, right? Yep. And so having that connection between you as a potential franchise owner and that franchise brand, the people, all of those things is hugely important, right? Everything. I mean, yep. you could, I couldn't work for a brand if I didn't believe in the back end of what the people I was placing were getting, if right. that makes sense. So gotcha. for operations, everything. So quick question before yeah. we go to break. Um, sometimes there's a myth or a perception, oh, you're just trying to sell me that franchise, Stephanie. You don't really care about anything. Um, is that true? No, I would say franchise development is almost an anti-sale because you need to get to know them. You need to make sure it's right fit. You also need to make sure they're fully aware of what they're getting into on the other side. But there's also the fact that sometimes you need to protect people from themselves. And just because they can write a check doesn't mean they're going to be a good fit for the brand. Yeah. Maybe they might be a fit for another brand, but culturally, behaviorally, it just might not be the fit for. for so you've been on right. So you've been on that yeah. side of helping people figure out right. Mm -hmm. Is that the right match both sides? But when we come back, I want to talk about your journey into becoming a franchise owner. Super 100%. scary and exciting. Fine. That's next with Stephanie Ruby here on the Franchising 360 Show. Welcome back to the Franchising 360 show. Uh, tonight, we've got our guest, Stephanie Ruby, joining us. So we just talked about, Stephanie, your journey and experience working mm -hmm. for a franchisor in the franchise development, trying to help find amazing new franchise owners. But now you are a franchise owner. Yep. Amazing or not, still yet to be determined, but I've got confidence <laughs> in you. Amazing, it's amazing. Right? So. <laughs> First of all, what made you think, okay, now's the time for me to be a franchise owner as well? It was actually my sister. Uh, so let me, for the record, right? So all the owners I've placed over the years, there was always a little bit of jealousy because it's, you know, they have an opportunity. It's right. an opportunity. Uh, and so uh, trying to make a long story short, but um, my brother passed away a few years ago. Uh, and my brother was an equity share owner of a major franchise, fitness franchise. I'll yes. leave names out for the sake of a few different reasons. <laughs> uh, and when he passed, he was in what I would say is conflict with his partner over his ownership shares. And so then when my brother passed, my sister and I picked up the fight. Um, it was a was in a short fight. Um, and then when we got through fight one for the quote, for the sake of my brother's estate, I hate that term, by the way, it just means people are after your stuff after right. you're gone. <laughs> but uh, when that was said and done, and then we got through the rest of the estate stuff, what was left, my sister and I were his, it, it was, it, it came to us, yeah. lack of a better way to put it. Uh, and so there was just enough left, right? You could do something with it, or we could blow through it quickly, which right. I'm still tempted to, <laughs> right? Uh, but my sister calls me one day, she says, why don't we buy a coffee franchise? Yeah. being a franchise for so long. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good one. Why don't we talk to a franchise consultant friend of mine? Thanks for calling me. I, I knew that was going to come up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I, I it was wasted a while our ago. first was a guest ago. on somebody that, okay, whatever. Anyway. But, so I introduced her. I didn't want any part of it because my life was really easy at the time. You know, those few moments where everything is just golden. Right. Uh, but I said, I'll, I'll invest with you, but you talk to these brands or talk to this consultant. He introduced us to introduce her to these brands and he's, she wanted me on the calls. Fast forward. I am not a silent partner. You're Shocker. never silent. I'm never silent, uh, despite um, against my family's wishes sometimes. But yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how we fell into it. And so it's been a long journey, but we're up to the point where it's happening. It's happening. I know. So we're, we are owners of? 
Image Studios, Salon and Suite franchise. I was going to say, so tell everybody what Image Studios is. Yeah, so essentially we build out uh, a large space, if you will, and we put mini suites in it for stylists, uh, uh, estheticians, tattoo artists. They essentially come in and they rent a space from us on a weekly basis. So they become their own little business owners right. underneath the rooms and support we provide. What's really, really cool is it's just an extension of what I already do because I'm like, ah, I still get to place people into business, right. which is what I love doing. Yeah. So again, so that was one of the reasons yeah. what were what, maybe something else you and your sister, you're like, oh, it's because again, there's 4,500 stinking franchises yeah. and you guys got to the point where you're like, yes, this is it. So it fit you from a recruiting yeah. standpoint. What were a couple of other things that really kind of meshed for you guys? Culture was big. Uh, even when I started looking at image, I'm like, I'm not buying an image because it wasn't the cheapest one we were right. looking at. But because of my industry, I promised myself that out of respect for the developers I was working with, I was like, I'll go through validation. Right. You know, I'll, ta I'll, I'll get to the point where I'm talking to franchise owners because that's what it really comes down to. And when I started going through the validation process with image and I started to learn about the culture, and I removed the actual financial upfront cost. Still, it's still an investment. But when I removed that, knowing that it's something that we could make happen, I was like, this is it. Yeah. This is where we're supposed to be. Uh, and it checks all the other boxes of, I can still keep my job. Yes. It's, and I'm not going to say part time, right? It's your life, it's your investment, right. but it's something that I can work in my life. My life allows me to work it still. And so just, and the money <laughs> we've got, there's, <laughs> there's going to be good money too. Right. So. Right. Well, and, and always, I, I think the money follows the fit in yeah. franchising, right? 100%. Once you, once you find that. So y you are getting close to being open, yeah. right? Um, and so anybody in the Tampa area, um, St. Pete, downtown St. Pete, downtown St. Pete, awesome area as well. That's how kind of, that's coming around Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving ish, should right? Be our launch. So this is a big real estate play. Yeah. So there's a lot to this. This is not a quick, easy no. open. Um, what was what was maybe the biggest challenge you guys have had to overcome? Yeah, the biggest one is the building we picked. Uh, so we did everything that we said we wouldn't do. We fell in love with the prime location. Oh, Stephanie, prime you know corner. better. I know, but we fell in love. Wait till you see it. It's beautiful. Okay. <laughs> I have, we have walls and we have patios and we even have floors now, stairs. It's, it's great. Uh, so what was the question again? I completely zoned out. What was your zone. biggest challenge? Challenge. Oh, the building. So going back to that, it was a hundred year old building. We're oh. going in on the second floor, but downtown St. Pete, right on Central Ave, right? Uh, so, but ultimately because the building was so old when they went in to redo a lot of stuff, they pretty oh. much had to redo the whole building. The pesky asbestos. Asbestos. <laughs> um, I, we went to see the property Dead one day. Dead bodies in the wall. So you know, called Bio, Bio One. one right? It's perfect. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so they essentially, we have a brand new build uh, for but what's cool is we locked in our rates a couple of years ago. Now look at what St. Pete's going through with the right. stadium and the high rises. And so we ultimately benefit from the delay. So right. things work out when they should and as they should, even if it doesn't feel like it at the time. But so location, location, location for, for Image Studios. Yeah. Um, so has that helped you as a franchise? owner now have those conversations with prospective franchise owners oh for sure how can it not right especially the fear roller coaster i get it i yeah. get it but what's on the other side right like what if you take this i get it scary in the 99 to 1 right we all know yeah. that but what if you take this step and you actually excel and you go to the next I level know. i know right so. crazy right all the and all the things all the control the freedom flexibility um uh, and, and again fantastic so i'm um, super excited to i can't wait to go down there and get get You'll my get, get my hair did party. um at uh at image <laughs> at image studios so stephanie thank you so much for not just coming on you've been like a friend for both of us for forever but like actually being the first guest you sucker yes. so thank you so much thank for you that for having me. so uh we'll be back uh on the franchising 360 show right after this Welcome back to the Franchising 360 show. Sitting with me again is Danielle Wright. Hi. Hi. I'm Welcome glad to back. to see you. It feels like and so long. I know I've missed you terribly. Um, Danielle, what about our amazing guest today, Stephanie Ruby? She was the best guest. I, she is the clearly the best one we've ever had on this show. <laughs> Low bar. <laughs> well, but you know, whatever. But um, no, you, you and I have known Stephanie for, for for a long, long time. She actually, funny story, took over for a franchise brand that I was working with for a period of time. Like there was some people in between. That's a long story, but it's that's how we first met. 
Yeah. And, and again, franchising, I just, it, it's always about the people and it's, it's amazing. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, why people get in and they stay in it for yep. so long. It's, I mean, how many amazing, just like it, I feel like I'm using that word too much, but amazing people in this in industry that we have known and, and got to, got to be friends with. It's just goes back to the t testament of like, it's not just about a brand. It's not just about a business. It's really about creating a family and a culture. And she did mention culture. And yeah. that's something that I, I'm with her equal. Like we get involved with franchises that really have a passion, a mission and, and stand true to who they, who they are. And that really determines your success. And I'm yeah. sure that's something on your side of the coin that you look at from, Hey, wh where do I pr place people? What type of personality, what type of culture do they yeah. want? And culture is really a tag line for a lot of it things gets used too much sometimes but like buzzwordy it does make sense if you can't if yeah. you haven't found your people as we like to say then yes. then it's not the right fit for you and we've seen time and time again on both sides of what we've done the 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 opportunities that's allowed people to to yes. create this life for them I mean, really again it's cheesy but it is life changing and whether it's friendships sometimes people meet in this industry and get married yes and or, or, or get businesses and are really able to grow it so um super super cool with that but that connection again when we talk about on one of our next episodes, the industry and does that matter? And some of the kind of the myth. She myths. really did speak to that, didn't she? Right. Like I don't. I, what, recruitment is her background, similar to you. Like right. I, exactly. isn't, isn't that what you kind Correct. of did for a little bit of time? So, I think we are all looking to try to help people have those connections and make those pieces come together. Yes. So. Yeah. Very good. And so we are like super excited also because we had another person we get to send out another one of these to a listener yes. uh, or watcher that had a i guess they had to do both probably technically watch and li at least listen um but we've got a question we need to address we do and it's from a viewer named henry in florida he asked, why should I work with someone to help me find a franchise business? Well, Henry, that is an amazing question. And I always tell people, because they'll ask us and our team at Fran Coach, this is what we do, is help people find the best franchise to own. I'm like, well, first, maybe you shouldn't, right? But that's, that's And okay. Stephanie said the same thing, right? right? So that, that's, a, that's okay. she'd rather blow her money than... <laughs> right. But it's, it's, again, I think it's because it's not what it appears to be. It's not like we find everything else in in life like she talked about stephanie talked about how did she find her first job in franchising well she's it's on indeed and I, I got recruiting experience so i'm gonna look for that she found the job that job just happened to be in franchising yes what connected her and her sister for that franchise had nothing to do with industry background no right and right. so the the, somebody like you know our team were able to help you really understand those intangible pieces what you're like what are your core values and again that's the buzzy culture but like how are you how are you going to align with people in that franchise and then how we've started is how does that franchise also support you right like are they really holding your hand as she said her building 100 years old right. i would have never now i have a commercial real estate background so that might have crossed my mind but really you don't know until you get into it and right. how much did they work with her during that like right. did they have more importantly did they have the right vendors to support her right. in that like how do you you asbestos well how do you get rid of that like what do you do and right. how long does that de like derail your project so i'm sure with that franchise specifically we're both familiar with them that they were holding their hands through the whole right. entire thing it's not it's not a small feat to make sure that someone can get launched successfully no and like we like we talked in the last episode about the importance of the plan yes. and following it but every franchise has a plan but they're they're human right so they may be a little stronger in one area than another so you also have to understand where do i need the most support so somebody if you are starting a franchise like that with your commercial real estate background you might not need as much as somebody coming in going holy crap, I have no clue how right. to be able to find that. And I only know a small portion of those things, right? right? Even even if you do, I'm not going to negate that having some industry knowledge can be important. And, and you kind of identify with that. So I've worked with someone that he's a human resources background, recruiting background. And most of the time, like you say, we're, we're generally putting them with brands that have nothing to do with their experience, but some people really do truly love what they do and then just want to do it for themselves. Right. And so I don't, I don't want anyone to think that you, you can't choose right. a business right. that it does happen. Right. It's just, it's not, 
it's really rare when it's I've always done this, therefore I own the uh, franchise. And I and should I, always do this. Right. But that's also an open mind piece right. too. And that's something that I think you do in your world right. with, with it's people. a chance to it's a chance to kind of like create like really create your next path and really yes. like like what do you want to be when you grow up right and to, and to henry's question i think it's really important to work with someone because you may not necessarily know what exactly. as you say gets you out of bed and yep. you can challenge us and ask questions and really kind of get to the root of what what inspires us every day yes exactly there, and this is kind of this question from henry and, and again henry enjoy your mug uh if you want to ask a question the franchising show.com send it in we'll be more than happy to ask ask it and answer it on the air and next week is really kind of a series of some questions that we have that are kind of myths and misconceptions yeah so it's like a myth buster it is a myth and an faq all myth rolled into busting one busting faq um so really don't miss it uh next friday um until then uh that is danielle Wright. that is me and i am tim parmeter that and, is him and this is the franchising 360 show